So anyway, these times I'm still working at Vice, going to Vader or whatever. Um, but then there was there was an incident at Vice. They basically tried to give me a disciplinary for a joke I made. What was this joke, man? So basically, there was this racist guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and No, sorry. Let me not say it. He's not racist. Racist but, guy. There was this racist guy. But he weren't racist, racist, but blood. he's a Crystal Palace supporter. He's racist, blood. He's a Crystal Palace supporter. And obviously, mm. everyone says that them lot are racist. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, Essex lad. Hair slicked back, works in um, the IT department. Of Vice, He's racist, fam. Yeah, no, of course. Mm. So every time, everyone you just say like racist Matt, racist Matt. You could mm. just tell your skinny jeans. <laughs> racist Matt is mad. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. like. So anyway, on his leaving card, yeah, mm. I said, "Big up the EDL. We don't, <laughs> um, we don't like Muslims." <laughs> Alhan. Oh yeah. god. But that that's like. Nah, you needed discipline, here, man. <laughs> no, that Mate, needed discipline. But man. the thing is, I'm I'm not I'm not used to office environments. Yeah. So, mm. so I'm just saying you that. Yeah, you didn't know they were gonna take it. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> because obviously, when I, when I say that, HR must have. HR must have. Just saying it to yourself. As Literally. Well. Yeah, so. HR. So that's the thing. I, I'm I'm poking fun. <laughs> that's like me saying. Yeah. HR must have told you you can't do this. No, nah, listen. So they took it hey, way too that, far. Um, really. Like, well, maybe it wasn't way too far. I think it was Shit. way too far. Yeah. But maybe it wasn't. Do you know what I mean? Because I am writing something bad on the card, but I'm poking fun at myself. My, my family's Turkish. We, exactly. we, 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 I come from a Muslim background, do you know what mm. I mean? Well, I'm saying that in irony because this is what racist white people say. Mm-hmm. So I've written it on a card. I don't mean it. Mm-hmm. I mean the opposite. I'm trying to make a joke at yeah. a fact that, do you know what I mean? So, mm. That's in it. So I put it on the card and then, um, yeah, it was going around the office and everyone's like, oh my God, oh my God. So the HR woman took a picture of it and called me into a meeting. She goes, yeah, Alhan, like, you've written something so horrible. I'm really offended by it as a Muslim woman. <sighs> All this shit. I mm. said, but you know, like, there's no point telling me. My name's Alhan. I have a Muslim <laughs> name. So were you acting like, uh, you know, don't don't tell me what you should, what I should be offended. I, I can make a joke like that. Mm. She's, you know, but it's in a car. It goes around the office. I said, cool. I hear, I hear you on that one. Like maybe I, uh, I judged it wrong. Do mm. you know what I mean, if it's something I say to him, she went bad. Inappropriate. Yeah, if I, if it's something I said to him in person or a, j- a joke between us. But I said, look, he's leaving a company. Mm. I just put it in his car, whatever. <laughs> And she's like, no, we're going to talk about this um, next week. And this was a Friday night. So I said, you lot are just going to give me anxiety for the whole weekend. For what reason? Mm. I don't want to think about this. Mm. So I'm going home now stressing. Oh, my God. I'm losing my job, job advice. Yeah, yeah, all this yeah. and that. Yeah. <laughs> like, they put some serious fear into me, yeah? So I'm like, cool. Don't tell no one. I don't want to tell my mum or nothing. <laughs> so I've gone back to the vice office on Monday, prepared to get fired. Anyway, morning, nothing. Afternoon, nothing. Then like 20 minutes before the end of the day, like, yeah, Alhamdulillah, we want another meeting. <laughs> I was thinking, we could have done this in the morning. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I'm walking around the office <laughs> feeling bad about a joke on me. Yeah. So anyway, they're talking to me. Yeah, um, we're thinking of leaving, uh, firing you from the company, but we we yet to make our decision. So, so, so wait, you've had a whole weekend. Oh gosh. So yeah, but we don't work on a weekend. So we just we've only been speaking about it today. I said, oh fuck this man. So now I'm actually getting annoyed. Because I know I've done wrong and I'm ready yeah. to apologize. You get me? By the end of the day, it was a joke. Yeah. And and the annoying thing is, Vice hired me to be the funny guy. Yeah, when you're a comedian, yeah. you, you hit below the belt. That's right. what you do. Do exactly. you understand what I mean? And, and when I tell jokes, yeah. I always get it right. Yeah. Not, you know, a few people can be offended by it, but ultimately like if you got two brain cells, you know what I meant. Yeah, come on. You can twist my words and make it your own thing. Cool, wicked. Have a problem with what I said. I think the that. best comedians are the totally <laughs> unedited ones anyway. 100%. Do you understand? The you start I'm, not, I'm never going to sit there and try and explain myself for yeah. a joke. Mm. I'm not going to sit there and, and try and, you know, listen, I can say a joke, 10,000 people, if 300 of them get, um, you know, really pissed off, mm. go on Twitter and write mm. a, a mad statement about me mm. saying, oh, you know, our hands should be cancelled, whatever. But I made 9,700 people laugh. Exactly. So be it. Mm. Yeah, I'm we happy are going that way. through a very offended time, though. 100%. Like everyone's yeah, always like everyone, offended. Yeah, oh, I'm that, offended. We're like, talking about that. Now. Do you know Honestly, what I mean? It's but, too much. And, and this was like, because Vice wants to be this woke place yeah. that support, you know, Lesbians, transgender, transgender and stuff. Stop. So it's like this. The, this is the worst thing <laughs> that can happen in the office. Stop. You're bad for that. I can't laugh. But anyway, so any so Monday night, basically, you're saying, yeah, we want, we still want to think about this. Mm. I said, you know what? Like, you lot are actually really taking a piss now. I said, because you don't even know like what what you want. Mm. And I said, you know what? The mm. same woman 
that had the basically the woman that said I'm a Muslim, mm-hmm. you know, so am I, you bitch, bruv. Like, so what? It's a fucking joke. Anyway, that woman was saying um, <laughs> that woman that woman's still holding these 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 meetings. I say, you know what? I say, enough's enough, man. I said, you, I t- you took this um, personally mm-hmm. and you're saying it offended you. So you shouldn't even be chairing these meetings. you got to get someone else from HR. Mm-hmm. Someone that doesn't have an opinion on this and yeah. can look at it from a neutral mm. perspective. Yeah. What did Alhan do and whatever. You're saying you offended me. You're, you're making it about yourself. Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. The card weren't to you. It, it had nothing to do with you. You saw it because it went around the office and you're going to make it your problem. Don't sit here and get emotional. Make mm. it a personal problem. Allow it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, then I put a complaint in. I, I wrote an email to the HR department. I said, look. You love it, Eva. Yeah. Email. But you know what? After this year, I'm sitting there. I said, nah, man. These lot pay me to be the funny guy. And I accidentally was the funny guy in the office. <laughs> and now I'm getting buried for it. Yeah, so yeah. I walked straight up to the CEO's office, innit? And he was on the call. I just walked into his room. He goes, like, put it in his phone. I said, allow it. Just... So you put it down and you put it on mute. And he goes, what's up? I said, look, I need to talk to you too. Just give me two minutes of your time. Mm. I sat down on the sofa, shut the door behind me. I said, what's going on in this place? It's a joke. Mm. And he's looked at me like... He raised his man. Yeah. He goes, what's going on? I said, look, I made a joke, all right? I wrote on a birthday card, taking the piss, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. I am sorry. But I said, you got to remember, you're he not got paying... He got the joke, in it. He, no, he got no, the joke, he said in to it. Me, he goes, what did you write? <laughs> he I told got you. the joke. He's like that at the back of his yeah, desk. Yeah. I said, you know it's funny. funny. I said, exactly, come on. Yeah. Like, you know what I meant? The guy's a racist white guy. <laughs> you know he thinks that about us. Anyway. And he goes, all right, I'll see what I can do, blah, blah, blah. I said, look, man. Because I had a relationship. Everyone advised me who I was. Mm-hmm. Whether it was the security staff, the cleaners that come after hours. or the like, I went there the other day for the first time in years. And the same security guy, old Pakistani man, legend. Mm-hmm. I ain't seen you in the year. Like, going mad for me. Mm-hmm. The CEOs, whatever, the finance department. I made friends with everyone there. Because that's my thing. Like, I'm not going to yeah. go as some awkward kid. Mm. I'm making relationships for life. One of these dons are going to go on to do big things. I'm going to go join them, whatever. But also, just show respect to everyone anyway. Mm-hmm. Everyone's the same, you get me? So anyway, so I went to the CEO. I said, blah, 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 blah. He's like, oh, don't give me this headache at this time. I said, look, man, this place is just woke and it's bullshit. No one enjoys working in these environments. It's nice to feel relaxed at work. Mm. If you make a joke, you slip up, you get a slap on the wrist. They're dragging it out for almost five days now. Mm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, next day I've gone in there, they're calling me in the meeting now, a different woman from HR. Alhan, um, we're going to, we're just letting you know, um, you you know, you should be thankful and grateful, but we're letting you keep your job. It's just going to go down as a disciplinary. So in my head, I'm thinking, nah, man, like this is still bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I should be grateful. Like, yeah, yeah. You could have told me this on Friday. That's the reality. You didn't need all this time to think about it. And look, I fucked up. I'm an 18-year-old. This is my first ever proper job. And you just dragged it on for time. Mm. So I thought, fuck it. But this was a, a lot into my like workplace advice. I've been working there for a while. This was, a, you know, just... Pro- anyway. But when you work for companies, especially when disciplinaries come in, it's... It- it quickly shakes you up. Yeah. That, you know, this is business, not like... But, but it didn't. It's not friend. You know, like, sometimes when you get like disciplinaries, it's like they act like they don't even know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand? 100%. So, it's like, because mm. you, you can banter with your manager or HR and stuff, but then yeah. when that disciplinary comes through, you say, oh, raw, like, yeah. you're not actually the guy I thought you were. Yeah. You're a prick. <laughs> <laughs> Look Do you know what I mean? But that, that's the thing, Cream. Like, mm. when, that, when, when the disciplinary came through, I, it didn't affect me. Mm. I just saw it, I thought, low. <laughs> and I, and I know my, that was my whole mentality in school. Like in school, they'll say, you know, you can't, you can't do this, you can't do that. I'm just saying, like, shut up. You know, yeah. your work's like, shut up. Yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah. I've never. Not interested. Yeah. But whatever, man. This video comes through. I'm looking at the email, scrolling through, like, no. <laughs> Fuck you. Like, if anything happens next time, you're going to lose your job. Shut up. Yeah, because yeah. they use those disciplinaries. Um, so that when they're getting rid of you, <laughs> yeah. they got hey. things to back their Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You know I, mean? I can't turn around and say you made me redundant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, exactly. cream. You know Haley works in HR. Does she? <laughs> Does she? Who's that? <laughs> oh, baby, <man. laughs> oh no way! Did she give out bad discipline? That made me walk still, out of a job. My, my so nine, like, they would have been. They couldn't <laughs> believe that joke. My cousin was. Uh, my cousin, <laughs> my cousin was. But she would have lied you though. She would have lied you still. You reckon? She would have got it. Yeah, she would have. She would have lied you. That's maybe because of our relationship though. She would have lied you now, but. My, my cousin was going out from a girl from HR and when she told me she was in HR I just had like it's like PTSD I said right I don't even want to talk to you because you you bitches in HR like you always get things twisted man. I said, well, fuck it fucked um, up my life but yeah and then so the next day they were like yeah you know you, you should be grateful that you've kept your job blah 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 so they think I'm going to say thank you next day I just handed in my notice I said yeah I'm leaving the company exactly 
And then they, they were just baffed. They said, yeah. wow, this guy was scared that we're going to fire mm. him. Now we've given him a disciplinary mm. and he's handed in his notice. Like, what type of... Mm. Mind how, games. Yeah, yeah, what type of mind games is this guy playing? But I thought, fuck him. I'm not... I am not going to be... I'm, I felt guilty sat in that office yeah. for a joke I made. Mm. If you put and me you're to supposed the, to be the comedian. Yeah, if you put me to the side... That, that, exactly. That, that's the main thing. If I used to work in admin or the IT mm. guy, whatever, you hired me And it was totally to be, out of your character and yeah. stuff like that. And it, it oh, made exactly. it look like you was inciting You hired me to be they controversial. They clearly know what it was about. Exactly. Humour and that. You, you, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. if I made that same joke on camera, I'd have got away with it. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I brought it into the office, now they want to punish me. Mm. But I'm here to do that anyway. I've been smart on camera and done jokes and I can, you know, poke fun at a white guy by, you know, talking about Islam or something like, or whatever. Like, it's a relatable joke. Mm. But because I didn't say it on camera and I said it in the office, it's like, cool. But at the same time, it's not going to be one rule for me and one rule for everyone else. Yeah. You get me? I did say something in an office environment, yeah. mm-hmm. so I'm going to get punished for it. But don't drag it on a week mm-hmm. and make me fucking regret my existence. I made a like, big deal. So what's anyway, your plans after that? I didn't have any. Didn't you? That's what I'm saying. I did that before, you know, in Selfridges when I was when I left school. What did you do? I was working in Selfridges in Oasis, and they used to have me in there early. I used to do all yeah. the merchandising and stuff. You know, when you're young and you're just trying to do everything. You know, exactly. you're, you know, you, you want to make an impression. Yeah. yeah. And the assistant manager, she told me to come in on a day that I wasn't contracted to go. Okay. So I said, "Oh, I can't come in on that day. I've got something." She was like, "No, you've got to." And I said, "No, I don't, because it's not. It's out yeah, it's of my point, contracted yeah. hours." And she said well, you're going to come in or you're going to get a disciplinary. So I said, I'm not going to get a disciplinary because I've left. Because I just I just said, you know what, fuck them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So 100%. I left. So when I walked in in the morning, like about two days later, because I knew the girls that worked in um, Barry M, the makeup st- um, section. So you have to walk through there. So they was like, thought I was coming into work. And I just walked past them and started working at the other, the no other way. stand. Yeah. And they, same scenario, similar to that, like the... Um, Manager Sarah brought yeah. me into the office. She was like, hey, Shaleen, are you sure you want to do this? Don't you want to come back? You know, exactly. whatever. And I was like, no, nah, I don't. I don't like how you dealt with me. I just left. That's how it needs to be. That's yeah. like, because you give them a reality check. Yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? It's mm. not like, it's not fair for you to treat someone like you that. You can't, yeah, exactly. You're going to yeah. threaten me with disciplinary because mm. I didn't come in on my days of contract. I have this contract for a reason. It protects me and it protects you. Because mm-hmm. mm. if mm. I do something wrong, you're going to go to the contract. Mm. Mm. So you're doing something wrong. I'm going to my contract and I'm going to get punished for it. I'm mm. cool. Mm. This is the wrong relationship. Like, mm-hmm. we can't do this. Mm-hmm. So that was my thing. So, work, so I it? handed in my notice and literally, I, I shit you not, hand on my heart, whatever, swear on anything, whatever, they offered me um, a pay rise to keep me. To? Because... After all of that. After all of that. You know why? Because if, if, if I'm a freelance host, I can charge them one day what I might get in like a month. Mm. That's what people do. And, and mm. I didn't know that at that age. I just thought, I work at Vice, I'm going to host all their videos, wicked. Then I was learning that there are people getting five, six, seven racks of shoot day. I said, what? See? When I was gassed for getting 250 quid. But then people doing five, six, seven racks of shoot day, they, 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 you can get paid more now. Mm. They've got influence, followers, whatever. You know what I mean? You're not buying into, you're buying into their audience, their, their you know, mm. whatever, like, regardless, anyway. I was like, yeah, fuck this. They offered me a pay rise. I'm just thinking, like, look at this. You guys were going to fire me. A week later, I'm getting offered a pay rise. Mm. So I said, quite enough, well, fuck this, man. It just didn't sit right with me. They obviously knew what your value was to of the course. company. Do you know of what course. I mean? Because that's why I said to you when you said about the ideas, I said, like, what? how does it work? What credits yeah. you get? Because a lot of companies, you know, they'll just have people in walk, walking in all day long, yeah. giving them their way, their ideas. And all they have to say is, oh, we're not going to use it. Yeah, but it's true. We're just not going to use your name on it. Like, we can yeah. actually come back to this because you've well, just the, given us an idea, no? The thing, the thing is, Cream, like, you see in, in working environments, and yeah. especially in the creative industries, yeah. Stuff like that could really, if you want, if you want to let it, it could throw you off. Mm-hmm. You could say, well, you know what? I spent months and months working on this. Mm. I pitched it to them and they've just shrugged it off. And if you want, that can get you disheartened and you can try and find something in that to be angry mm. or try and, you know, hold them accountable for something. But the reality is, like, that's just where we are. Mm. If you work somewhere full time, that you've got a job security. You've got, you know, like, you don't have to worry about, you know, how am I going to, make ends meet this month mm-hmm. because you're getting your wage whatever so like you trade that in for working for a company and your work goes up as their work you don't get credits whatever like it, there's there's trades and swaps yeah, in everything yeah, in life yeah, yeah yeah so it's 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 like it works both ways you know what yeah, i mean and definitely. especially like running a production company now 
I can see how, you know, the benefits of having full time staff or using freelancers and stuff. Yeah. Whatever. There's so there's so many layers to it. Mm-hmm. But like, I felt violated and I thought no, nah. so I quit. And then that's when I went to join Boiler Room. Mm. But my position at Boiler Room wasn't even guaranteed. So I'd already quit Vice. And I had nothing backed up, no, no plans, nothing. So that now they're offering me a pay rise, mm-hmm. but I've got no other places to be. So I could, literally called the owner of um, Boiler Room. Mm-hmm. I said, look, man, I need a job. Mm-hmm. So I'm leaving Vice. And we'd already been in conversation because he was saying, you know, like, I see what you're doing at Vice. So you was adamant that you didn't want to renegotiate yeah. that contract. I was like, done. Done. And I think that was, that was a bit of pride. And I was quite young. Mm-hmm. And I was just... I wanted. I had a point to prove. Yeah, you just mm-hmm. they're just taking a piss. Yeah, mm-hmm. but really, mm-hmm. it, it was like a dangerous thing what I did. Mm-hmm. It was just before Christmas. This was after a year at working at Vice. When I left, I think it was like maybe September, October times. Mm-hmm. It was just before Christmas. I've got a full time paying job. It's my first ever job. It's the first time I've ever stepped foot into this industry. So like, how am I going to chuck this away? Yeah. And in hindsight, it's, it was a dangerous thing. But at yeah. the time, I was just so arrogant, stubborn. I was like, Nah, I'm. This is me. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And I just quit my job. Mm-hmm. But then anyway, I went to work at Vice a year after that. I joined, like, it started in January. Boiler room, you mean? Yeah, yeah sorry, boiler yeah. room. And then started working on some bits with them. But that's basically when, that's what started. That's where it started. And then from there. So, you know, just, just, so what happened? Why you lot stopped? So we fell out with boiler room, kind of during the COVID period. Mm. Okay. But they were saying, you know, this is a hard show to make <laughs> during COVID, which we all knew, like, we, we'd all come to that. Conclusion. That's why we were even having crisis meetings in the first place. Like, how the fuck do we carry on this show? But you can't really. Mm. And we started doing a couple episodes on Zoom and, and, and you know, FaceTimes with rappers and stuff. But it's not the same. And that's why no one can keep, call me a keyboard warrior. Because mm. when I'm on my laptop talking to these rappers, I, I want to be in the same room as them, them. look to their <laughs> face and say, yeah. your music's shit. <laughs> I want to be in the room. I want to yeah. feel that. It wasn't the same. I'm on yeah. laptop bantering with Mike Skinner and I was just like this is not you know this is not the same show Mm-mm-mm. so anyway then they were like look we can make the show but we're not going to pay you and Poet it became a that conversation so yeah you know we invest a lot of money into this show we don't make any money on it it doesn't get monetized on YouTube because you swear every five seconds so mm. we can't run adverts on it um, we're in the red we don't have merchandise we don't have a brand sponsor I said look like, how long have you like, had this show I think this must have been why wow, COVID? Maybe it was probably a year and a half into Gasworks, maybe even longer. Mm-hmm. But we had two solid seasons. We had the viral episodes, you know, the biscuits, the yeah. ACs, whatever. Yeah. Like it was a great show. It was, it was really good. And then they're basically saying, "Yeah, we're in the red. We're not making money on this." It's like it's not about making money on this. If you want to make money, you will make money. And that's what we're saying to him. We said, "Like, has anyone gone around shopping to brands and stuff? Exactly. Have you spoken to?" whatever headphone brand, whatever retail brand, whatever sportswear brand, have you told them there's a show, like, come sponsor it? No. They haven't even had, like, a, a a PDF that goes round saying what the show's about, sponsor it, nothing. Like, no one cared about the show at Boiler Room. Yeah. Literally, Poet and me. Yeah. And the reason we were doing it is because, one, we want to make something for the audience, and two, like, yeah. Boiler Room were giving us money for it. Yeah. But they didn't care about the show. So they didn't even hot. really know what to do with it. We said, mm. getting hot. Hot, blood. <laughs> Need the lint roller, fam. Mm-hmm. but they don't know what to do with it like it's not their world their thing wasn't really rap yeah their thing wasn't really it was just all house techno so when they see you know this long haired guy and this black guy come in and start shouting at everyone and what they're thinking what the fuck is this like <laughs> just let them not do whatever they want and, just, and they never really believed in a show really they never like considering it, that he got so much engagement and everything yeah like, really? well, after, that's when it that's what because <laughs> I said look on the second episode I said yeah. cool like let's get Biscuit yeah nah this is a music channel you know, we can't have... And it's Poet who made me realise this, but they were basically saying, you know, we can't have that type of people on our channel, this is music, and they were just kept saying no to it. We were like, we know what's best for our audience. This guy just touched his mum's bum and no yeah. one is grilling him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We need, we need to set this right. Mm. Anyway, and then we just... We, we basically lied to them and said there was an artist coming that day for that episode, and then we just had Biscuit. I don't know. And then I think it must have got... I think it was... Quarter of a million views in in, in a couple in a couple of days. Mm. Phone calls. Who are we getting next? This show's amazing. Mm. It's picked up. Whatever. Oh, shut oh, up, man! Yeah, you lot yeah. were trying to prevent it from now. even. Ha- yeah, but yeah. it's like cool. It doesn't matter because again, you can sit there. You can get disheartened. You can let it affect you. You can say, yeah. ah, they don't yeah. care about yeah. me. It yeah. don't matter, man. They didn't want to take a risk. Yeah. You took the risk anyway. And it worked, and now they're listening to you. But whatever. Regardless, they're listening to you. Ooh. So now we had all you know. 
the budgets and whatever. Like they knew that there was something here, so they made the show work. But yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, after a year and a bit during COVID, they tried to use it as an excuse saying, "No, we don't want to pay for this show anymore. We've lost a lot of money on it." Mm-hmm. It's like cool, you've lost money on it, but you've gained credibility. You're now in the rap world. People know Boiler Room. Exactly. No one needs to give a shit about that. You're just gonna watch a DJ on a GoPro for forty five minutes. We don't care. We don't. That's not our music. We don't care mm-hmm. about that world. Mm-hmm. You don't make nothing with rappers. You don't do anything with this. You, Boiler Room has now bo- paid their way into UK music culture. Yeah. Not this weird house techno Spanish guys, whatever. Like mm. it's it's UK. People know about Boiler Room. Boiler Room, so. you like definitely had the unique selling point. Yeah. I think. Do you know what I mean? Of course. What made you come up with the Bocat line? I was supposed to ask you are you a bull cat you know (laughs) what do you think Uh, (laughs) the guy that asks everyone his his entire existence what made you think to to ask that but did it just come out one day you ask someone and then you said you ask everyone it was the jammer episode that we filmed with him but it never ended up coming out okay but I said to him he he was just going on a tangent just waffling just talking Mm. and I was just like jammer are you a bull cat (laughs) I was watching him talk and I was just looking at his lips I was like one minute one minute I said one minute I said, hey, Jammer. <coughs> right. what, that, what that mouth do? So, oh, so, and he switched. He was like, how are you going to ask me that? Yeah. Ooh, this is, I said, all right, cool. We've got something here. Because yeah. you know what? I love Jammer. And, I, and we, yeah. we were laughing about the situation. Like He laughed seconds afterwards. Yeah. yeah. How are you going to ask me that? <laughs> I was thinking, you know what? There's actually something in asking rappers, yeah. are they a bokeh? Because like, men are insecure about stuff like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Men are insecure. They, they don't, they don't want to go down on a girl like what what big, big man them. like me so, so, I mean look crazy but why it's like exactly. it's just you're making your girl feel pleasure you know what I mean it's exactly. like it's not the end of the world but it's like this whole thing I was like ah cool so now every time we have someone on a show the icebreaker is are you a bo yeah that's like and from when they walk good. in, they know what it's about. Yeah. They're like, this is not a serious interview. They're not going to sit here, ask me about my family life, how I got my name, mm. what my career means to me. It's obviously a joke. The first question they just ask me is if I'm a boca. So you, you've set the tone already. Mm. You've Was set there the tone. anyone that you said it to and you felt a bit... Um, Frisco's first reaction was quite yeah. funny. <laughs> and then big up Frisco. Big up Frisco, big up always. Frisco. Yeah, his episode, he was here was yeah, good as man. well. He's a G. Yeah. Um... And then who else to be? But like, yeah, there was a couple of funny reactions, but literally after two, three, four episodes. Everyone got used to it. Well, like people knew that it was going to be the first question that came, do you know what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. So now it's like, now when we have people come on, they're ready to ask us. Mm-hmm. We've been caught off guard a few times. Like, one minute, are you? Like, before we've even started yeah, the show, I was like, yeah. shut up, man. <laughs> um, 